half year resident in Ringwood. I have some documents, and I know there's not allowed to be a lot of stuff. I'm presenting it. I'll give you the copies of the documents and explain what they're about. And my question. Back on May 4th, I sent an email to Eric asking about getting the Rinwood, what they call the mini park, and the Miller Creek Bridge cleaned up, get the overgrowth, get the weeds out of the park, get it cleaned up. And to date, I've had a response from a loop that's supposed to have been cleaned up by last week. To date, the only thing that's been done is cleaned up curbside. And I just wonder how long is this going to continue? without anybody attending it. But, I don't maybe there's not money in the budget to cover it. I don't know. And that's my comments. If anybody would like to ask me questions on it, I've presented pictures, emails, <coughs> showing the park. I'd be happy to speak to that. Okay. I think I, I'm, I'm living it. Oh, you're living Yeah, hi. Uh, nice to put a face to your name. Um, yeah, that's actually been worked on this week. We did do the trimming over the overhang um, that I mentioned to you, I mean, that you originally asked about. The, no, uh, the limbs, I mean, like No, it ago. hasn't been done. I can look at the pictures. Um, well, I mean, I, I, at least on one side of the, the street. Um, let me check this out. And then uh, our guys actually are scheduled to be working there this week. You'll see in our in the agenda that, that is on the, on the calendar. The okay. uh, Parks and Rec Commission is doing an inspection this month of the mini park, and that is something that we are currently working on. Okay. Well, I just got your thing last week, and I've been going down there. I walk there every morning, and I haven't seen anything done except somebody had trimmed a couple of bushes off. But there was a job, which I commented on, where you cut the uh, weeds down on the curbside in both places. Yeah, we've done some weeding in some of the limbs that were hanging down over the sidewalk. Um, and they're more, you know, continue to work on it as they, you know, they want a lot of projects, but that's that's on the agenda. This okay, time. somebody, I just thought somebody went by and did some clipping. Hanging out are all in the county road right away, and we should not be spending dime one or minute one doing that. Call County Public Works. Okay, I never knew that. The right of way extends at least six to ten feet behind the bridge rails. I'll send an email to Conley and put it out. The CSD said it was his responsibility. They, they did uh, a bunch of work on Mount Lassen not that long ago, on Mount Shasta, and I know they did Bridgegate last year, though it's coming back again real fast. Mm -hmm. But that's all county road right away. Well, you know, the, the road right away is okay. wider than the email physical or, improvements. Sorry, hmm? Email you a comment when I'm sending this to Tommy. Can I get your email? And oh. I've lived here longer than you also. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So you're in the $20,000 homes. Okay, I'll copy you an email. Have you spoken yet? No. Do you want to speak? Or do you want? All right, yeah. I don't know if you guys know, Billy's been pretty active in the community, working down at uh, yep. the market, and getting some signs up around the neighborhood for no parking, so I thank you. Yep. I appreciate now we're your working on getting the... The weeds cleared. No, that's great, but I'm working on getting the, pro the plaza cleared where contamination and the hot spots and everything else are going is major and they want to close it out. I appreciate your efforts, so thank you. Thanks, Bill. All right, thank you. Okay. Other public comments, open time for items not on the agenda? Yeah. Um, well, a couple of things. First of all, uh, good evening, everybody. This is another exciting opportunity to improve uh, Marinwood, um, make it more fiscally responsible and beautiful. And um, I would like to say a couple of things that actually are not on the agenda. First of all, the, uh, I believe the mobile home uh, on Las Galinas is still there and it's been six months. I don't know what they pay for rent, private rent. I guess about 300 bucks a month. That guy's been parking there for years. And I would like to know uh, if the board's going to do anything. Uh, about this or the general manager I think it's been brought to the attention and I I just don't understand why we don't protect our land um, perhaps Eric could address that I don't know what you're referring to there is a mobile home parked on Las Galinas uh, on our uh, on our land on our park land yeah I've spoken to the sheriff's department about it it would be within their jurisdiction 
do it for us. So, but you also have to submit a complaint, I believe. You are correct. Okay, but you haven't done that, so that's really, I, I would think it'd be like three days and it's out of there, but uh, are you planning to sue them, or what, what, what's the, uh, because basically they're getting away with free parking on our land, and that's an area that we want to uh, improve at some point, so it extends our park. I'm sorry, is it the RV that's parked? It's the RV, yeah, if you go from the mini park right across the street to the right. Yeah, no, I, I, no, I just, I, I thought that I was done with one, but okay, RV. Yeah, so I, honestly, I, I think it sets a bad precedent. Uh, we've had people cutting down trees, installing debt, parking RVs. You know, let's take care of our land, okay? So, uh, so that's item number one. Item num number two is actually concerning the park, and I guess I can wait for that later. But uh, anyhow, happy June, everybody. Thank you. Any other public comments? I would like to say something. Do I need to stand up? No. Thank you. Um, this is in relationship to censorship and what I would like to say is that at the last meeting, when you know I've been continually requesting that we have a new policy or a policy for communication from the district manager. And at the last meeting, um, according to the minutes, Naylor commented, this issue has been dealt with, referring to a written policy for communication from district manager. And Naylor also stated the board rejected the idea of this policy and will not restrict the district manager in a written policy. I wasn't trying to restrict him, okay? I just wanted a policy that says, you get an email from the public, you return the email, or at least uh, re uh, return back to the person saying, I received your email, I'll respond in a week, okay? That's all I was looking for. But what Naylor says is the board rejected the idea, the board, hmm. Naylor rejected the idea, and Ms. Green agreed with him, but the board did not reject the idea. So what I'm trying to figure out is, it seems to me like Naylor wants to interject his opinion or his edict or his uh, censorship on me, where he's saying, so Linda, it's I'm, not. Linda, I'm going to interrupt. Um, that's, this is for items not on the agenda. And you're I'm sorry, I can't hear you. This is for items not on the agenda, and you're referencing the minutes, which were in the consent calendar, which was item E. So that's the item prior to this. No, this is my open comment. Right, but this is limited to things that are not on the agenda. And what you're talking about is something that was just on the agenda. So I just want to point that out. So if you can limit your comments to something not on okay, the agenda. Okay, I'll limit my comments then. Simple. I don't understand how Mr. Naylor can say the board rejected an idea, whatever idea he is thinking of, without having it notified, noticed in a board <coughs> meeting, added to the agenda as an item, an action item. Um, if you're going to make a policy change or add a policy change or restrict someone or censorship someone, you have to have a, a, the item on the agenda, you have to have the board discuss the item, and then you have to have a vote whether or not you are going to add this censorship to your bylaws. So this is something that according to bylaws, according to uh, the way the board works, you can't say, Naylor was speaking for the board, you can't say that. He was speaking for himself. He did not, he cannot say the board rejects something without the full board rejecting something. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move on to item G, district matters. Item one is resolution 2018-06, determining the fiscal year 2018-19 appropriations limit on tax proceeds. Sure, this is an annual requirement of all government agencies, uh, state, city, local. Uh, 
under Article, it's quoted in here, 13B of the California Constitution. We go through this every year. Uh, this is basically also what's commonly referred to as an expenditure or an, a, a spending limit on tax proceeds. It has really nothing to do with our tax projections. It actually has to do with uh, a combination of uh, CPI and population <coughs> increase projections provided by the Department of Finance from the state of California. Um, so what you see in here resolves this need for uh, the district for the next fiscal year. All right. Do I have a motion? I'd like to make a motion to approve the resolution as presented. Second. All right. Um, questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments from the public? Stephen? Yes. So um, our revenues are up uh, at, uh, because of the housing uh, recovery and uh, we you know, continued good work uh, from our rec department. I would really like to see uh, you reject this and reject it to the just as 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 an exercise in fiscal discipline I actually think I'm, I'm actually think that the fact that we do not have more set aside for emergencies is pretty disturbing that was happened last month but you know this reflexive raising of the taxes year after year without thought about our longer term needs. It, it, to me, it's, it's just wrong and it's irresponsible. Um, so, you know, ask for more taxes, guys, but there's going to, uh, the day of reckoning is coming. Um, I just think so. I'd like to state for the record that this in no way increases taxes um, that are imposed on our residents. Thank you. The, All right, there's no more. Well, well, no, no. It, it, it is. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's not. No. no, it's not. It's not. It's, you're it's, wrong. You're wrong. Trust me. It's an appropriations limit. This has nothing to do with revenues. This is an expenditure limit, and the rates are set by the state of California. And it bases on prior year, and it just goes over year over year. Okay, so any other comments from the public? Okay. Um, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's move on to item G2, another resolution, 2018-07, proposing an election be held in this jurisdiction, requesting the Board of Supervisors to consolidate with any other election conducted on said date, and requesting election services by the Marine County Elections Department. I'd like to make a motion to <coughs> approve the resolution. Second. All right. This one's pretty straightforward. We're, we're, uh, we're going to have an election coming up, and it'll be consolidated with the general election on November 4th, and the Elections Department will do all, handle all the balloting and counting. Okay. Questions from the board? Okay. Questions from the public? Uh, just a point of order. Um, you skipped over the appropriation, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the salary. Uh, Appropriations. Is I'm, I'm just looking at the. Uh, it's coming up next. Okay. All right. Any questions, comments from the public on item G two? Okay. Back to the board. I'll call a question. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. All right. Item G three. Fiscal year 2018-19. Publicly available pay schedules of all positions. Again, this is a, just a simple required document. This actually doesn't increase any pay levels or anything along those lines. Uh, in fact, most of them are, if not all of them, exactly the same, with the exception of uh, the assistant recreation director that wasn't in this larger document last year but was approved earlier in this fiscal year. Um, and then some of the hourly wages, you have minimum wage increases that are happening, and then some. Uh, uh, wage adjustments on lifeguard, and uh, which also encompasses uh, private swim lesson instructors. Questions, comments, um, more? I know that in our website update, we um, had to include a link to um, California mm -hmm. state website that mm -hmm. actually lists. Um, the pay schedule. Can we include this document on, on our This website? document is on our website. It is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this, we're approving this to put it on the website or to put it out publicly? 
Um, you're approving this as the actual pay schedules for the upcoming fiscal year. Okay. Uh, the other year, you don't need to approve making it public. I mean, it, it has to be, okay. it is a public is document public. regardless, okay. and uh, it has uh, always been recommended. It goes on the website. We've had this on the website in the last couple of years. Each year it's updated. As is the link to the, uh, to the SCO. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Sure. I just, for clarification now, all of these pay scales and, and salaries, they've all been previously approved by previous actions of the board. This is just putting them all in one place as required by state law so that anybody who wants to see them can see them? Mm -hmm. Correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any questions, comments from the public? Steve? Yeah, um, so uh, you mentioned uh, lifeguards and swim instructors. Um, I understand the swim instructors got paid like 35 bucks an hour and maybe more. So is that, how is that accounted for in this? Is that something separate where we, we pay our staff as contract employees part of the time? Luke, you want to respond to this? Well, we did. Uh, <clears throat> there's different... Um, hourly wages depending on what they're doing. So when they're working as a swim instructor, it's a different pay rate than when they're working as a lifeguard. So but it's more um, than $21 an hour, right? Uh, correct, yeah. Some of the swim lesson rates are higher than $21 an hour. And does that come out of the lifeguard salary or is it a special bucket for uh, programs? Um, it comes out of aquatics. Yeah. What's that, aquatics? Aquatics. Yes. It's just a portion of the budget. It's based on sign-ups yeah. for private lessons. It's all based on revenue. Oh, okay, so just for clarity's sake, so this is not normal pay, it's contract pay for special type of work. The swim, swim instruction. Swim instruction. Yes. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So, actually, I don't think that's terribly transparent. Um, I, I, they do good work. I'm not really complaining about their pay, but but um, perhaps for clarity's sake, we need to make these distinctions um, because, from what I understand, uh, there's uh, staff does get paid for contract work outside their normal um, pay scale. I, I think I, I, I think I've heard that. Is, can you confirm that? Um, like for special events and that sort of thing. No, uh, it was basically the swim lesson, uh, that program, things right. that fall under the aquatics programs, there are pay rates for the people working in that program um, that are not part of this uh, lifeguard salary range, but that's the only instance I can think of where that would okay. apply. And it doesn't apply to special events? I no, it does not. All right. Is it, a, and I'm, I apologize for not recalling what happened last year, the year before last, is this something that happens once a year where we, where someone goes through all the pay scales and changes numbers and adds, you know, adds or subtracts numbers? Is this something that happens once a year? I mean, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. There was, there was no adding or subtracting numbers. So the, this, how do we explain it? So, um, do you want to no, Isn't part of our budget deliberations the establishment of the salaries for the various peoples in those, in those various budgets? And maybe, you know, maybe we haven't changed them a lot lately, and so we aren't realizing that we, we're when setting them, but we aren't. When there is a proposed that. change, it is brought up as a separate action. At which point, then it gets incorporated into this document, and also noted at which, at which point, or on what date it was changed. Like in the rec department, because we had a little shuffling of responsibilities Correct. and titles, so that Correct. came up separate. Correct. It, and well, I didn't quite understand the answer. Um, this happens as needed. But I think what Linda's trying to get to is the fact that the budget was approved. All of all of this feeds into the budget. Okay, so it's all it's all been approved. 
Um, it's just that Eric has to pull these numbers out in one clean form because CalPERS decided a couple years ago that that's what okay. the state wants to see. So I think there's a bit of confusion. This isn't created just, you know, it's this this document isn't separate from what's already been approved in the, in the in the budget. So these numbers are kind of pulled from the budget that's already been approved. Oh, that makes sense. But what I recall is like with the rec department when we had a little turnover and right. some and again that was, in, that was a separate. That was separate. And so what I'm asking is, does this new report show any additions, any increases to any other areas? I mean, no. 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 So it's the same old numbers. Yeah, it's, it's just presented differently. It's reflected yeah. for the upcoming fiscal year. Thank you. A, a point of clarity. Um, so you have ranges, like for example, I'm not picking on the lifeguards, but from 11 to 21 dollars an hour, how is the pay scale, individual pay scale determined? Is it by merit? Is it by seniority? Um, and this would be true for each department. Um, I mean, like in the fire department, you got, what, six, six levels of pay. How is that determined? Is that, is that a merit thing or? No, within fire, it's determined based on the language of the MOU, or just as in anybody who has a step scale system, they come in at a certain step. Sometimes they come in at a slightly higher step, and they graduate on an annual basis to the next step. So it is a seniority-based uh, pay increase. Is that correct? Length of service, so longevity. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what about for the uh, part-time staff? How is that? Uh, it tends to work the same, but with discretion. It's not a guarantee. All right. So let's come back and any other questions? All right, so let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so moving on to item G4, Greenwood CSD ESS Committee um, update for the meeting. I can take this one. We met last night with really no new information. It was just we hadn't met in a couple of months, so it was meeting to say hello and that we are waiting for more information and we'll reconvene when we have hopefully more information from the city of Santa Fe. Are there any questions? Did I miss anything from any other people? Okay. I think that was kind of the broad stroke. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Um, questions from the board? Anyone up here? Okay. Questions from the public? So we, we may be at peace with North Korea before the, we see something <laughs> from uh, the city of San Rafael. Um, I, I urged it, it in uh, times past that you really, I mean, I hate this, you all probably hate Trump, but one thing you have to admit, um, he is a negotiator, and I think uh, there is a, there's an opportunity here to to assert ourselves, uh, and we should. If we're not doing that, we're we're going to just basically take whatever crumbs they want to give us. And I'm a little concerned, reading the report, that we're 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 not we're not dealing from a a, a, a position of strength. And uh, that's you you're representing the public, so I, I hope that you take this next step very very seriously. Thank you. Any other comments? Linda? Well, I was at the meeting yesterday, okay. and they are talking about um, going into more options and going into more depth, but what I wanted to make a comment was, it's been three months since they had a, a meeting, and it seems like, you said, we are, the ESS committee is going very slowly and have not had many subcommittee meetings so my question is, in the, before the next ESS committee meeting, will some of the members of the committee be meeting for their subcommittee meetings? I'm not sure that statement's inaccurate and we corrected I, Excuse me? Your statement is inac inaccurate. And okay, we said that you. last night and we corrected that last night that all of the, the different subcommittee committees have been meeting as necessary and will continue to meet as needed. But right. there's never any meeting, meeting, monthly meeting, to tell us that. And so that brings up the question, oh, 
You're not having a meeting. Hmm. There's nothing when? to report. Hmm. You're not having meetings, subcommittee meetings. Right. So, so I'm hoping that what Stephen was talking about and what you all were talking about at the meeting yesterday is that you will be moving a little in more in depth. When we have information to meet with. So yes, thank you. Thank you. Anything else from anybody on the ESS committee? No? All right, let's move on to item G5, district manager's report. Sure, uh, just a few kind of points that I made in there as, long as, as well as some other items of note. Um, in terms of the facility replacement, I mentioned last time that we'd engage for an archeological cultural resources evaluation. We've got that back, it's actually posted onto the uh, <laughs> website to be viewed and we're also uh, engage with the, the Federated Indians of Great Rancheria in the consultation process. Right now the ball is in their court. I'm waiting to hear back from them. They've been provided a copy of the archaeological report. Um, and then once we have those pieces done, and we will be able to kind of move on with our initial study and uh, actually be able to notice that and put it out and look further in that direction. Um, in terms of the FEMA claims, I just wanted to give you guys kind of a brief update because we hadn't really talked about it um, too much. Uh, the one thing, and I, the chief may have touched on this in his report, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, uh, we're set and scheduled at the end of this month to start the grading and repair work on Queenstone Fire Road. Uh, that still remains a uh, active claim uh, and it's according uh, to my contact there, is progressing through the FEMA processes. Um, the two creek sides are still in the eligibility review process uh, at FEMA, um, so I don't have a timeline on when that will happen, when we'll get something back from that. Uh, we're kind of awaiting further status from them prior to moving forward with uh, repair options that were suggested in the Miller Pacific Geotech report that I shared. Um, LAFCO update, um, I, I, yeah, please, okay. Um, on a LAFCO update, um, I know we've been kind of eagerly awaiting a study from them. Uh, they, for the past, I don't know, maybe six months, have had an interim executive officer, a woman named Rachel Jones. Um, she is no longer with them because she has accepted permanent appointment with Alameda County LAFCO as their executive officer. Last I heard, they have another interim executive officer in place who started on June 4th. Uh, I don't believe they actually conducted their last meeting just to give him time to get up to speed. Um, I would absolutely anticipate further delay on the uh, MSR study that they are responsible to produce. Uh, and I would also suggest uh, uh, potentially either this board or myself on behalf of the district write a letter to the commission stating, hey, we need this study to get done. I think we're greatly looking forward to some of the information that it contains. Um, the last one was completed in 2006. They're supposed to do these every five years thereafter. Um, so it's about seven years overdue at this point in time uh, for our region. Um, Chief Roach and I have been meeting regularly uh, in preparation for his upcoming retirement. Um, I've engaged with Nicolay Consulting, uh, who are, has performed our last two OPEB actuarial studies, so they are working on that now. This one is slightly different because it's transitioning to what's known as GASB 75. Um, the General Government Accounting Standard Board has updated uh, how OPEB costs and uh, liabilities need to be reported as well as calculated. Um, and then just a note that I will be out of the office uh, for two days at the end of this month to attend a CSDA conference. Mm -hmm. Questions? One question, one comment. In your section on the FEMA yes. issue, you say when you're talking about the creek, both areas have been stabilized in efforts to prevent any further damage? Uh, yeah, in house by ourselves. You know, they. It, I showed you on the one area they did the levels of grading and uh, have tarped off that area. And one of the suggested options for you know from Miller Pacific was do nothing and leave it as you have it here. They didn't project a lot more erosion coming in that area. And then in the other area we kind of fenced it off uh, 
and went through and he didn't also project much further if any erosion in that area yet said you could certainly build this back up if you so chose to do so. There are a couple trees that need to be removed from that area though. Okay. The other thing you I, I concur with your comment, you know, we've been waiting for LAFCO. I, I think the district is kind of at a crossroads as to what to do relative to the fire chief and that sort of thing. And I, I think it's imperative that we write a letter to the LAFCO board, copy the new interim executive director, tell them, we, we, you know, we were, I think at least, eagerly awaiting their, their, their study so to help us make some decisions. And if they're going to keep postponing, we're going to have to make some decisions on our own that uh, may or may not conform to what they come up with, if they ever come up with something. I'm happy to put something together on well, behalf of the district. And I can either put it in, uh, or draft it, put it in Leah's name, or her review and assign it as the board president, or I can send it on behalf uh, for myself as well. Whatever you guys prefer. Either way, I think, you know, anything we can do to say, hey, we're here. And, yeah. um, with the uh, maintenance facility, after we get something back from the Federated Indians of Greater Manchuria. Yeah, we might not get anything back from them. They have the right to be involved in the consultation process, uh, which they have requested. Uh, we have provided them with the documents they have requested to date, invited them to meet based on their review of those documents, and now they have uh, the date in the not too distant future to respond if they have that interest. Okay. What's the next step after that? Next step is to finish what's known as the initial study and notice that and have a, a public hearing regarding that, uh, at which point everything comes together there, you submit your site plan review application. And that, don't we have, um, don't we have several water bureaucracies to go through too? Every environmental regulatory agency has been noticed. Okay. Including fish and okay. 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 Uh, Other questions from up here? Questions from the public, Linda. Um, I was wondering. It it seems to me that last year, when I sent an email to one of the staff, and it might have been Shane Demarda, um, I got an automatic response saying, "Out of the office for these this week. Please talk to somebody else, or if it's necessary or important." I would like to request that the district manager, when he is out of the office for those two particular days. And I'm not exactly sure what it is with the email, uh, automatic response, but I would like to request that the district manager add this thingamajiggy, whatever it is, to automatically put out a notice to the emailer saying, out of the office for blah, 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 and please respond to, or please email someone else if necessary. Is that something doable? Um, I hear your request. We can, you know, discuss it. It's not on the agenda, so. Um, I well, it's related to the two days that he's out of the office. I, I understand. I, I don't want to get into a back and forth. So I thank you for your comment. Uh, any other comments on this item, Stephen? Yeah, uh, I have a number of questions. Uh, first of all, uh, the ar I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to look at the archaeological study. Who was that done by? Archaeological Resource Services and a certified archaeologist. Okay, so uh, and they use the the data, the slaymaker data. The reason reason being, I'm going to go through a number of things here. Is I have all the documents at the uh, from the county historical room uh, showing the actual locations, and I was actually surprised this entire area was considered an Indian village, right along the creek here. Um, pretty much the entire park, the 14 acres here. So um, that would be interesting to see what what that <coughs> study reveals. Um, one thing that is missing, and I, I did a little bit of research, uh, in the 2007 general plan, there is a setback for, uh, eight, uh, for parcels greater than two acres, and it's um, 100 feet. Uh, stream conservation setback, but 
if it's a larger parcel, it's even more. And I looked at our parcel, it's 120 feet, which is a huge problem because that, what that means, almost that entire area back there is it within 120 <coughs> feet of the uh, what's considered the stream bed. The stream bed starts at the top of the bank and, um, well, anyhow, that's going to be negotiated with. I'm really shocked that, that you're as far down the path here because, uh, uh, but as I said, uh, uh, the main concern there is the size of the facility and the, the closeness to the creek. Um, I, I, Bill Hansel's design is, is really a huge violation of it. And depending on you know how far you want to go there, uh, there's a lot of options to uh, see that the proper size facility is placed there. A narrow facility may, and I only say may, uh, uh, be worked in there, uh, right behind Donna's house. Uh, that's the furthest from the creek area. So, um, you know, before you go far down here, I mean, the other thing about Hansel's design is you've got basically a road right running right through it, and it's a very inefficient design. And that, to me, is uh, actually more of a concern. Um, you know, it's a, a step concern, but it's also a practical concern because we're spending way, way too much money on basically a garage. Um, as far as the storm damage is concerned, uh, I see that the way we're addressing problems is to create fences and keep people out of the area. I wonder if that's really in our long-term interest. Maybe we should be repairing these area, um, but every acre or square foot that we take out of the park just it makes our park smaller and I, I just I, I'm not sure that if, if there's a safety concern. Can you wrap up your comments please? I think uh, you've gotten close to the three minute window here. So uh, I'd like to move I, on. I'm, I'm, I'm working through it yeah so this is the uh, uh, Right did you have a specific comment about Yeah the I you know Leah please do not interrupt I, it's really I, I, I'm trying to respect your time. Please respect my yes, time. time. Because when, no, I'm going to continue on, Leah. I'm sorry, but you really, this is the way that meetings are supposed to be run, okay? They're supposed to, okay. Uh, as far as the storm damage goes, I don't believe we're addressing this in a responsible manner. As far as LAF go, um, is the the uh, merger of the fire department a LAF go decision, or is that something we can uh, make independently. I'm unclear on that. A full-blown merger would absolutely have a LAFCO influence. LAFCO review. Yeah. LAFCO review. But if we we recommend that it, it probably would go through. Is that? I, I don't know. We're not speaking of LAFCO. Yeah. Okay. And then as far as meeting with Chief Roach, um, I don't know what specifically you're meeting. You you didn't really say what you're meeting about I'm kind of curious. Stephen, it's very it's listed all in here. So I'm not sure if you read this or not. No, like I, you're re -reading I am, no I'm reading it and I I'm, I'm that's asking not, him that's to not the to purpose of this time. Okay? Uh, so I'm asking him to him to, to express his ideas that he's written down. And I Is there a reason why you need to interrupt me again, Leah? Because you have gone well over your time. Okay, Leah, and this is a public forum. I am a member of the public. I have a right to be here and to ask questions of our government. Not okay? taking up 10 minutes okay. right now. Okay, you've gone over your time. I'm closing I, this comment. Okay. okay, so please, Stephen, look, do not do that, Leah. Please do not do that. You know, we have all different ways we can conduct meetings. But the way that you do it by interrupting people, insulting, batting your eyes, it's it's just it's childish. It really is childish. Stephen, this is your I'm asking I'm asking Stephen, a question of how our fire department will um, be changed and how the fire chief chief's uh, position is going to uh, evolve. All Eric has said is he's met with the chief. I wanted to say a little bit more about that. There's nothing to report, dude. We talk about the weather. We talk about our kids. 
So we you talk, talk about, about we the talk weather? We talk about things that I do in my job and who's going to do them in my absence. Okay? That's all we have right now. Please be quiet. Also, I'm sorry. Um, I, please do not be rude to me, Chief. This is, this is a personnel uh, issue, and as such, it uh, should be treated confidentially. I'm interested in simply the job functions that are being taken so over. Right now, the I'm reason why is we're problem. talking about so a merger, and so we have to understand what's going on. Now, we can argue about whether or not I can ask these questions or not. So I'm going to call recess. Okay, good. You guys don't want to talk about what's happening here. You, what has happened is you guys have. Uh, you, you're controlling the information. You want to be di directors. You don't want to be uh, part of a, a democratic process. I really object to that. It's a public meeting. It is a public meeting. <clears throat> but and I would it, like it, it takes two. There's two sides to everything. I, but Stephen, when you go over and you drone on and on and on, that's not helping the matter. Okay. So you say what I, I drone on and on. You don't like what I have to say. No. I so don't, what? I don't, I don't like matter. what you have to say. I don't like that insult. Okay? But we are part of a public process. And so our, we have to make the commitment to engage one another. We are engaged, aren't we? Well, we are now. Stephen, the, the subject that you were talking about, it's the, it says under you know other items of note, it said Chief Ro the Fire Chief Tom Roach and I, Eric, have yeah. been meeting regularly in preparation of his upcoming retirement plan for mid October. Right. That's pretty clear, I thought. No, I, I it satisfied yeah. me as to what's going on. Well, great. It satisfied you. Uh, to me, it just says Chief Roach is talking about what he does, what he said right now. He's, he talks about the weather. That, to me, that's just that's just throwing up a smoke screen. Because I know what's happening, because there's a negotiation happening. That's why we're not getting reports regarding the, the CSS Commission. There's all kinds of back issues going on here. And, and the public deserves to, to know what's going on. We are spending a ton of money on our fire department, and we're going to continue to do that until we get these expenses in line. And the only way that's going to happen is if we have a fair allocation of resources. I want a responsible community so we can continue to live here for many years and be able to pay our bills. And that's not what's happening right now. Stephen, there's, as I see it, there's two sets of negotiations going on. One is between the district and the firefighters. That's confidential. No more discussion. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that's that's true or not. I mean, you, you do have you do have uh, uh, negotiation rights, but you do have to you know you have to communicate with the public. Right. If we doing. make a decision, and no decisions have been made, the other issue is a negotiation theoretically between San Rafael and the district, and we're waiting for the San Rafael to respond, and they aren't responding. Well, then. What are we going to do? We can't go to Kentfield. Er, I, 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 I have great faith in you guys that you can do a little better job. I'm sure you right. now negotiate not better as, as individual. Back um, into order. I'm, I'm speaking, you. but I'll, anyhow, I'll. No, uh, the meeting has come to order. Thank you. I realize you like to be in charge, Leah. She is in charge, dude. <laughs> She's interrupting. She continues to interrupt the public. No, they, it, that's the way she works it. That's the way it's worked here. But that is not the way you conduct a public meeting. You don't see the, you don't see the Board of uh, Supervisors act that way. Absolutely do. Yeah. Absolutely you, not. You're given how many minutes to speak? Two minutes. There is no, no, no one says, 
be quiet, I'm going to uh, do something, or that is not the way it's done. So everybody okay, I'm here, sorry. Let's, let's kind of come pull it back a little bit. I will say that we did pass a code of conduct uh, policy with the board last month, so I would like to remind the board that we have that at our disposal, and I think going forward it might be prudent in the event that things get out of hand or whatnot that we issue a series of warnings um, or whatever before taking further action on that. So that said, I would like to move on to item H, fire department matters. Item one is draft minutes. And may, fire I, may I speak to you what you just? No. So why, why not? We are on item H1. But you just brought up a subject that I would like to address. So um, the fire you, have a, you have a, you have a, I, 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 that's a point of order from the president, Stephen. You are out of line. Okay. If you're going to play Stephen, little games, you're going to you're going to okay. personally be liable. H one fire department. So the fire commission hadn't met for a month, so I got them together, basically just to go over the happenings of the department. It says that the uh, cabinet should be finished in four to six weeks. And I went and just, I think we ought to have it for clarity, but what that relates to is sometime between July 4 and July 18. Yeah. And we ought to keep that in the back of our mind, a date, not the number of weeks, so that we can uh, hopefully push this thing along and get it done. So the uh, John Pope has been, I don't want to say putting pressure on the cabinet maker, but you know, this, following up with them a couple times a week, say, hey, where, where do you stand with this? These guys want to get this project done. So John's trying to use whatever influence he has with the cabinet maker to speed it up. Other than that, you know, we've got everything else here. I think once the cabinets are in place, it's, or once the cabinets are put in, it's, you know, turnstiles. Then it'll be done in a week. Well, the countertops are in the What? It's a solid slab. So they're, they'll be able to get those in in probably two days, if I had to guess. They first have to come out and measure it. Oh, that's all. Make it's all been done. They have yeah. measurements. They're getting close with everything. Excellent. Any other questions, comments from the board? Questions, comments from the public? And I just had one quick question about <coughs> the fire department. Wasn't there a uh, captain's uh, advancement? Ca uh, captain's promotional exam? Yeah. Yes, we did. did hold a second one. Um, one individual took it and he did not pass the written and he was not interested in meeting and conferring and moving forward in the process. Oh, so okay. right you. now the captain's position on sea ship remains open and is being um, John Papa Nicolau and Otis Smith are working together. Uh, they split it by month. One does one month, one does the other. Okay, great. Thank you. Stephen? Um, so I asked last month, uh, what the uh, what the uh, situation is with the old stove chief is that for sale? Not currently. What what is going to happen to it? I don't know. I have a place I'd like to put it in. So can I make an offer, uh, or are you I'd going any, to just? I read any of that through the district manager, so I'm not quite sure where the fate of the stove will end up at this point. I see. It may be needed in the recreation kitchen. It's a six thousand. Right it's now, we are on draft minutes of the stove. fire commission meeting. So, is that in oh, the draft minutes of the fire commission meeting? No, that's okay. Okay, just trying to stick, keep us on task. Do you have anything else, Stephen, from item uh, H one? It's regarding the, the fire commission and the fire department, Leah. Right. Well, Thank you very draft much. Minutes is the only thing that we are talking about right now. Um, so the next activity summary is the next one that we talked about? Fire activity is H2. Okay. So hearing nothing else on H1, we can move on to item H2, fire activity summary and sheet report. So maybe we were pretty busy getting ready for the wildland season. Um, that involves testing all of our wildland hoes and putting it in wildland packs on our various engines. Um, some updated training for all the guys in the month of May. 
Uh, Wills is currently going through the uh, Wildland Fire Academy across the freeway. Finishes tomorrow. He'll be back on shift later this week. Um, and we were also very busy running calls. We ran 108 calls in that month, which was, uh, you know, at the higher end for what we normally do. Um, as far as the chief report goes, uh, as, we, as I mentioned, Dan has moved on to San Rafael. We currently have two paramedics, Wills, on one shift, Sean Day on another. The third firefighter paramedic vacancy is being filled by a temporary firefighter, Brad Davenport. Um, we can use Brad for up to a thousand hours, and the way that the, his hours reset at the fiscal year probably gets you through October with him in the position. Uh, I am putting together a list to hire a full-time firefighter paramedic from. Um, so I, I actually don't plan to fill that position until I get some direction back from the board. Um, and I'm not currently filling the relief firefighter position, and that was provided through some discussion with Eric on other things that are going on. But uh, with Will's coming back on shift, we have three people on each shift, which is what we need, um, especially going into wildland season. Continue to work with the CERT steering committee on disaster preparedness. We had a very good meeting last week. Had about 25 people from around the community. We're focusing on personal preparedness and wildland fire preparation, principal space. So trying to get as much information out to the public as we can on that. As uh, Eric mentioned, the Queenstone project is slated to get started next week. It should take about 10 days. Um, we're doing it in conjunction with the project <coughs> contractor and Marin County Fire Department. The county fire department is offering up all the equipment and the dozer operator free of charge. There'll be some costs for uh, the consultant fees and a few various supplies that might need to be added. So it's some crushed rock in various places, some, um, rental some rental equipment, a water truck. So our contribution to that project could be in the area of five thousand um, dollars. But it's it's important that this get done. That road's in bad shape and it's a major one that we use. And with what. Marin County Fire is contributing to the project. You know they're probably going to be up in the ten to twenty thousand dollars worth of the accounting, the equipment, and the personnel costs. But they're there and they're available, so they're willing to help us with it, which is great. Uh, kitchen remodel we've heard about. So it's on point. We're moving right ahead with that. And again, the succession planning is uh, where it is. We're waiting to hear back from something from San Rafael. Um, I've heard that Marin Woods doesn't seem to be in a strong negotiating point. I don't agree with that because I think that we do a lot for the city of Santa Fe, and we shouldn't forget that. Um, with that being said, I think the relationship is important, and it's something we've been involved with for close to 50 years now, and we've been involved for 50 years, both sides, because there's been a lot of benefit to both sides. Questions? Yeah. Questions and comment. Uh, last month, our co total calls into the two JPA areas <coughs> was 49% of our of the total. This month now it's worked up to exactly 50%. 54 calls out of 108 were into the JPA area. And uh, I don't mean to interrupt you, but that is a normal number. It's not like it was high one month or another. No, You'll I see 50% month to month. I, I see that, yeah. but my point, the point I want to bring out is, or the number, is relative to this, you know, equitable, sharing in this joint powers agreement. I have no idea what the joint powers agreement says. I don't know what its term is. But uh, in last week, last meeting, you said Senator Pell comes over here up between zero and five times a month. And looking at the calls, there were two fires in Marinwood uh, last month. Did, I don't know if we had, if Senator Pell came over to help us with, for that or anything else. But I, I'm concerned about, one, the equity here. Because, and the other question is, I remember years back, before I grew this beard and was a firefighter, uh, uh, we, the JPA area was just the original one across the highway here. But whenever there was a call there, our engine went, and so did a center fell engine. And our goal was always to say, code four, no further help necessary, before that center fell engine ever got there. And we could do that most of the time. My question is, for these 54 calls out of our district, were we be, was Satterfeld moving an engine in to cover for us? No. So the we have nothing, nothing here. Well, then. you do. You're protected by 
56 or 65 in Nevada. Okay. They'll good. dispatch the next closest engine company if there's a second incident in Marin within these response to. It. Okay, but they're they're a good ways away compared to. They're not as close as we are. Yeah, and but that's sort of normal standard coverage operating. Well, I I know when we used to have 20 to 30 calls a month. We still had multiple calls at the same time, and then the volunteers covered that second call, and we were at the station and, and ready to go. It was a lot quicker. Uh, but again, I'm concerned about the, the coverage. I, I, it just seems awful lopsided that we're spending half of our time out of our district. Uh, I, I asked the chief with the construction of Station 57, that engine is now at the old station 53. I went and checked. It is seven tenths of a mile closer to the intersection of Smith Ranch Road and North Redwood Boulevard than our station is to that intersection, which means they're cheating their own residents out of response time and having an engine respond that doesn't have a paramedic on it. What are they? Thinking, so except a, how can we save money well, I think that at, at our is, expense? I don't want to speak on their behalf, but my thought is that they probably just didn't want to change the response cards because it's about a push between three, and three or eight going to that area, and they're temporarily going to be at station three. They're going to move back to station seven at the end of the year. So that move from seven to three was a temporary one to allow them to build. So it takes place for about a year. But we don't have a paramedic engine on a paramedic on our engine. Where they do, so there's a you can't argue with that. So it just, like I say, the whole thing seems inequitable, not just to us, but they're even cheating themselves. And I, I'm hoping some of that rationale can get to them when and if they ever respond back to us about how they want to, uh, how they would propose to uh, deal with us. In so the I, I, we should talk offline, Irv, because I have some okay. thoughts. Um, all right. All right, any other questions, comments from the board? I, I'm sorry, I have one other item, and I don't know how I'm going to get in trouble for it not being on the agenda. But I got a letter from PG&E this week that says if there's a critical fire hazard, they're going to shut off our electricity. We got it, too. Yeah, yeah I assume you did. Now, I, looking at, at your building maintenance report, we're, we're checking our generator for our firehouse operation. Uh, what, well, the generator gets checked every single week, and then the what flipping the switch gets checked once a month, which I think is great, especially because we had a problem some time back. But the question is then moving on from that. We got the firehouse taken care of. If the electricity goes out, is there some rules about if it's in the middle of a Saturday afternoon, the pumps go down at the pool? Do we have a policy about clearing the pool? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. No, and then last question, are there any residents that we're aware of or other buildings in the district that's, that are going to have a problem that we're going to need to react to if the electricity goes out? And if so, we ought to be thinking about it as well. So the, my short answer is no, I don't. But in the last power outage, I had two residents come to the firehouse and they explained to me that they had uh, you know, elderly parents who are at home on home oxygen and they need power for it and you know, it's become kind of kind of be a big problem for them if they don't get power back on soon. In those two incidents we have extra generators at the firehouse that I let them take for a couple of days or until the power went back on. So I don't have actual addresses of where those could be a problem, but they usually find their way down here. And we do our best to accommodate them. Okay, well, as long as we're ready, that's all I I, I, uh, I would that. say as far as that particular letter goes, if the power gets shut out based on the circumstance of that letter, our crews are going to be fighting the fire somewhere. Their fire house is going to be No, not necessarily. No, they're talking about turning it off just in a high wind then. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Because, I mean, they're getting hammered on oh, I the know. results of last oh, fall. Uh, yeah. What yeah. is considered a high wind event? Yeah, if that's PG&E. Okay. So let's close that in. Um, any questions, comments from the public on the fire activity summary and chief report? Linda? First, uh, to Irv, I'd like to remind you that Mr. Naylor said we can't do everything for everybody. So, it, you know, if we've got a couple 
people that need help, like up in the hills, we can't do everything for everybody. But my question is, and, and this is equability, who belongs to that yellow fire engine in our fire station tonight? Oh, we're borrowing the Santa Fe engine because ours is down. Ours is getting made. I'm sorry. We borrowed one? We're currently utilizing one of Santa Fe's reserve engines while ours is getting maintenance done on it. For how long? Two days. How long? Two days. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so we do get, that's a big, big chunk of money we get from Santa Fe. Thank you, Stephen. Okay, so I'm always pleased when I can agree with the staff members and the chief, but I, I do, uh, do appreciate the work that's being done here, and I appreciate Irv's comment about 54% uh, of the calls. Um, it, it, you know, uh, I, I'm actually very inspired with what is happening in North Korea. Uh, it seemed unthinkable uh, just a short period of time, but we're now discovering that there's there's opportunities in, in the things that can seem. Can stick with what's on the fire chief? Sorry. Yeah, I, can I continue my? Can you not no, interrupt not, me it's again, not gonna please? Go for one, three minutes. Okay, so. Okay, subtracting your interruptions, I'll be happy to continue. So um, there's an expression: uh, Why why buy the cow when you get the milk for free? There is absolutely no reason for San Rafael to give us anything. And until we have the backbone to change uh, things, maybe they want a new fire station. Maybe they want uh, something that we have. Maybe they want our equipment. There, there's opportunities that we're not seeing. Um, but we also have to be willing to walk away from San Rafael, and I, I, the JPA, we get nothing. We used to get paid 300,000 bucks, now we get paid nothing. Um, there is a way to, to move this forward, and I don't think sitting on our hands waiting for a response is the way to do it. Um, anyhow, uh, this is a very important for our future, and we really need to get this right. Um, uh, we are paying for paramedics for seven years that have uh, we've never received anything uh, for that other than promises and uh, you know, quite frankly uh, it's time to act. It's time to act. Thank you. Alright, moving on. Item H30, date of next fire commission meeting July 3rd. And now to item I, park and recreation matters. So first we have item one, draft minutes of Park and Recreation Committee meeting of May 22nd. Does anyone have any questions? No. The parking, just the, uh, the meeting? The minutes. The minutes. Okay. Okay, there's nothing from the board. Any questions from the public? Not on the minutes. I do have, I do have general okay, questions so concerning the call. Thank you. Um, okay, so hearing them, let's move on to item two, fiscal year 2018-19, measure A, work plan. Uh, yeah, this is just something I wanted to put in front of everybody. It's uh, every year we have to submit a work plan for measure A funds. I actually stay in pretty good contact with the uh, county parks department who oversees all of the measure A funds. Uh, I kind of detailed out in here where the current balance stands, what we uh, are anticipating for the coming year, and where that will bring our balance. Um, and in uh, I, uh, staff still, as well as the Park and Rec Commission, uh, recommends for this coming year that uh, we just focus any Measure A funds on the park maintenance facility replacement project uh, for this year. This was an approval item. So is there uh, a motion? Um, so moved. Second? Okay. Uh, discussion? Questions? Comments? Um, the thing I would say is that it, it can always be changed. If needs come up and this is the funds to dip into, that can be uh, decided and approved at a later date uh, by both this board as well as the county. Okay. So this is a work plan to tell the state of California? To tell the county of Marin. County. Okay. 
Looks good to me. Um, questions, <coughs> comments from the public? Linda? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm still kind of confused about the measure A because I do know that, now I know, don't say anything, Samrafel is huge, they have a lot of sales tax, they probably get a big bunch of Measure A money, and they are using Measure A money for vegetation management. Right now, that's the hot issue, everybody's talking about it, there's all kinds of seminars, there's all kinds of reporting, there's websites, there's talk everywhere about vegetation management. And I would like to know if, okay, all of us taxpayers in Marinwood pay sales tax that goes to vegetation, well, that goes to Measure A. We all pay taxes that goes to Park and Rec and to Fire. So why can't some of Measure A go to vegetation management? And I'm, I'm putting it under the auspices of the Fire Department because that's where it seems to be the most logical, I guess, Measure A money for vegetation management under the Fire Department. Why is yeah. all of this sort of being spent for parks. Why can't some of the money for Measure A go to vegetation management, which is so critical right now? Just to put some things into perspective, uh, we get approximately 87,000 a year in Measure A. Santa Fe gets approximately $487,000 a year from Measure A. Obviously, they're a bigger city, but uh, they did you know, do the math six times the greater amount than this district is. And they send their vegetation, the measuring money that funds vegetation management projects in the city is dispersed through their, I'm not sure if it's DPW or their open space district, but I don't believe the fire department gets measured. I would, I, I would have because mm -hmm. measure A is purely a park. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a talk specifically for. I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, I mean, my understanding measure eight specifically for parks, and so this is how, you know. No, it isn't. You're wrong. Have you read measure eight? No, I haven't. So whatever, okay, well, whatever it is, this is the direction that we have taken, and why? given that but the why main, can't we have some vegetation management? I understand, but this money is not even likely even a two fifty seven may not cover the cost of the maintenance shed replacement. So if our primary focus is to replace the maintenance shed. We want to put all the Measure A money towards that. So that's a great idea if we have more money, right? So I think we're saying thank okay, you. Okay, we take 5% of it. That's not. Let's that. take the money so of it. Thank you. Instead of having four wonderful, expensive skylights that are going to leak on the Eichler, why don't we take that money and use it for vegetation management? The, 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 com the commission made a recommendation, and the board is choosing. Which commission? The Park and Recreation Commission. The Park and Rec Commission? Yes, made a recommendation on the work plan and the board is... I can understand that. Right, so the board may or may not approve the work plan. We'll see how the vote goes, but I think the best uh, place for you to engage in the conversation would have been at the Park and Rec Commission meeting. But it shouldn't just be for the parks. And it shouldn't just be the Park and Rec Commission that makes a decision. So thank you. Thank you for your comments. Er. It's my recollection that the chief has some vegetation management money in his budget that is used on or in our park or open space property. It isn't on private property ever. Correct. So we do put some money into vegetation management through the fire budget. Yeah. 10000 Nothing. 20, 20 for the upcoming year, which is good. Um, Stephen? Yeah, so um, my understanding is similar to I guess, Bill's understanding that Measure A is for the parks. And uh, when you say vegetation management, that can mean many things. I assume what you're referring to is for fire prevention. Um, but I think absolutely we should be putting it to the pool or some park or recreation fund because I'm pretty sure that's what it said. I don't think you haven't read it. Okay, I I, I don't think I don't think we should be mixing budgets like that. So um, anyhow, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Uh, any other further questions, comments from the board? Okay, let's call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.
Can I catch your room? Yes, hi. Sorry. Uh, okay, let's see. Moving on to item I3, Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. All right. Um, <clears throat> Well, first thing I listed on here is just our next event would be the summer music series, uh, which I was hoping to have listed on here. Um, Bill just had a baby, uh, and he's been helping us line up the artists, and uh, he's uh, promised to have that done by the end of the week. Um, so we will. Uh, um, so I should, we should have uh, the full lineup of the series out by the end of the week. Uh, we'll have some posters up and um, be excited to announce those bands. We'll probably put the uh, links to some of their websites up on our, on our website so you guys can go and preview them. But from what I have uh, heard from Bill, it's a really exciting um, set of artists. And I'm looking forward to another great music series. I'm uh, hoping this wind that we've been getting every evening uh, stops by the time uh, June uh, 29th. It'll stop yeah. until the 29th. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, and then after that, or in the middle, uh, cutting the, the music series in half will be our um, Summer Brew Fest, which is on July 28th, uh, and that will, uh, we're looking forward to another great event, um, a bunch of local breweries and a couple bands at that as well. Um, the big event uh, for us right now is the summer, our summer programming starts on Monday, uh, which uh, seems very, very close. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're really excited. Uh, things are coming together. Uh, we've been doing um, tons of trainings and orientations for returning and new staff. Uh, lots of meetings, getting all of the logistics planned out. Um, where are all of these um, many, many camps and kids going to be? How are they going to get through all the different uh, activities and areas and um, feeling feeling pretty good about it and I think um, it's going to be a, a really fantastic summer. A lot of great staff returning. Um, we've got a lot of good special events planned and um, uh, enrollment is looking really strong and we're offering more um, options and, and different activities than we've ever offered before. So um, we're, we're pretty excited, working very hard. You'll see if you've been around at all this, this week, last week, staff here uh, Plugging away all hours, um, just getting last minute things in place. So um, that's where all the focus is right now uh, for, for REC. Um, we all are looking ahead to the, to the fall programming, our classes, events, and, and getting that set up because we uh, always strive to get our information about the, the upcoming uh, fall and winter out while we have all these families and kids and people in our facility, giving them all the information so that we can start um, uh, getting, getting plugged in for all the upcoming stuff. So. It's always a challenge to do that during summer, but we're, we're always trying to think about all that. Um, any, any questions about the, the rec, rec side of things? Um, on the park side, um, similarly trying to prep our uh, parks and picnic areas, pool um, facilities just for the uh, 500 kids that are going to be streaming across all of it in the coming weeks uh, each day. So. Um, Right now, we are working on getting um, some of our landscaping cleaned up and fortified. We've done a lot of turf repair, irrigation repair, just trying to get everything as good as it can get um, before the onslaught. So we're working on the park right now, um, working on a new fence in the far field, um, just bordering the drainage ditch, um, mostly as a safety measure. And um, as uh, Mr. Nick, 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 Nicholas uh, brought up, but uh, uh, also our, our crew has been focusing on the mini park, um, trying to get that uh, cleaned up a little bit as there are some um, you know, weeds that are overthrown uh, there and, and elsewhere. So um, the guys are hard at work. We've had a sort of a, not a full crew for a lot of the last couple months for various reasons, death in the family and things, so trying to get caught up, but um, things are going pretty well. Uh, questions about parks? Or yeah. Or uh, your your the new fence along the drainage ditch. Can you be more? I, I didn't get. Yeah. Right. So Wait, um, which ditch? Which side? The far field. So the area between the tree line and the tennis courts in our, our park here. Yeah. Um, we call that the far field. Uh, there is um, a fence along the creek where we have the erosion. Uh, there's and we've decided to um, continue the fence along the. There's a. 
I don't know what the right word is for that um, drainage, 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 drainage area going towards the street from, from the creek to the street there's where that tree line is. It kind of bisects the park into the two fields. There's a ravine there that's a steep drop off and we have a lot of kids out there playing soccer, running around, doing different activities um, and it's been uh, considered sort of a safety hazard to have that abrupt drop right there. So we decided to go ahead and extend that fence along that area to be a, a safety barrier. Okay, so, so it's the southerly side of the ditch? Uh, north 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 northern side of the ditch. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 so, the south okay. end is kind of guarded by a bunch of you know, bench and trees and open area that are uh, not a, a real area. used area. There's a path um, between the ditch and the park. On the north side, it's just the grass where, where the kids are playing kind of goes right up to this drop off so we're trying to you know and that's the side where the famous uh car shoot shoot stuff is no no, 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 no you're way shoes. off uh, oh. where the where they have the car show the second grass field over oh okay yeah between the, right. between the tennis court and that okay. correct yeah. right okay. right yeah. so Got it's it. actually uh all the way on the steal your terms, on the southerly side of that grass field, on the northerly the side, side of, the of the ditch that separates those two grass and fields. And is it going to look like the fence that you did around the uh, slip out area? Or it's exactly, yeah, it'll be exactly the same no. style. Yeah, it'll kind of be a continuation, so it's sort of an L shape. But, uh, You'll be done by, by the, the same people. Yeah, by the same. <laughs> It'll be done by the end of the week, most likely. So. Just in time. Right, yeah, cool. exactly. Uh, any other questions for the up here? Any questions, comments from the public? Yeah. So, uh, starting with rec uh, activities, a special summer events, um, I recommend that you look at what Ocean Marin JCC does for promotions. They have brilliant promotions. They also have a summer series. They do. Um, they spend less than we do, but they actually have better marketing what they do is posters and they there's I'll, I'll drop you by yeah, something that they, they they have given us they also charge 25 bucks you know admission that we, we're not going to do but they have preferred seating all kinds of revenue opportunities and a whole bunch of sponsors so I think there's an opportunity there that uh, we may be missing um, as far as uh, the pool programs you know, we've lost, again, lost a lot of Saturdays to um, swim meets, and it just, I, I don't know if every pool has as many swim meets as we, we do, but I'd rather, I'd, I'd like to see us have uh, more Saturdays available for our, uh, you know, residents to swim in. Um, as far as park maintenance, I am concerned about this fence because it seems like we're, we're cutting off like 20 feet. We only have 14 acres in the park, and seven of which, or, or fewer, are improved areas. We've got three full-time staff working it, and every time we chop off a little bit of our area, we lose a less recreation opportunities. Um, as far as <coughs> maintenance goes, last weekend I was out, there were no uh, dog bags available and there was trash in the park i wanted to throw out a, a can i had in my car i couldn't find a recycling uh, uh, facility close by i know there's one up front here but number one i'm going to ask that we have more recycling available two um, our staff attendants on the weekends should be picking up trash on saturday there's as there is almost every saturday the big group in our park and they leave mounds of trash which uh, raccoons had not got into them but they will get into them and they'll create a lot of problems so I would like to see more active uh, uh, maintenance on the weekend um, so maybe I, I don't I don't know how that's being addressed if at all but um, uh, we certainly can can take care of that also if we're not getting revenue from some of these uh, big groups, we should be getting revenue if they're, they're outside and they're, you know, creating trash. So even if it's, you know, 25, 50 bucks, it may cover the part of that staff attendant. Um, lastly, the uh, maintenance facility, 
but we talked about there's only seven acres. About an acre of that is being taken up by maintenance activities, or maybe even an acre and a half. And most of that has to do with trash, uh, uh, brush, it has to do with materials, it has to do with parking of, <coughs> of implements, and um, that there's no maintenance staff that I know of that does that. I mean, we wouldn't put that on our front yard. We wouldn't hire a contractor and let them do that on our front yard. We need uh, to rethink how our maintenance is being done for the benefit of the park goers. So um, we can do better. Like I said at the beginning, let's, let's all focus on how we can make this a more beautiful uh, and livable community. Thanks. I do have a question. Oh, sorry, Linda. Don't forget me, please. Okay. Um, first, I would like to ask that the ravine, the drainage ravine that Luke was talking about, can we fill that in? No. With dirt? Yeah. No. It's so the water can drain right into the dirt. <laughs> no. Okay, so we cannot fill it in. Okay, fine. Uh, next question. I wanted to mention that a couple weeks ago, there was a Sunday event in the fireman's picnic area on the panhandle. And just by chance, I was walking a dog the very next day, and that picnic area, Luke, has been cleaned up by the people, Stephen's wife. Uh, it looks wonderful. They picked up all the big, big uh, branches that had fallen from the winds. They scrubbed all the tables. They, the barbecue grill is the cleanest I've ever, ever seen. So I just want to make mention that this group, there were 75 people, I think, something like 75 yeah. people there. They did a fantastic job of cleaning up. So on your list of cleaning up the fireman's picnic area, you probably don't have to do very much. And my last question is, um, there is a small child's playhouse. It's blues and yellows and pinks or purples or something that has been sitting right next to the maintenance shed for about two months. What's going to happen to that and why is it there? Uh, we're deciding whether or not that's going to get refurbished and put back in the playground. It was taken out to um, put in the Could new you sandbox. Away from your mouth? Thank you. It was, uh, yeah, sorry. It was taken out uh, in order for us to have room to put in the new sandbox. Um, and the idea was to either relocate that um, to another area or to uh, replace it. So we're looking at options where we can fit it, um, and we had to do some other work in the field. That's all I wanted to mention. The other thing is we don't have dog bags. It, it ends up on the trail. So that is a real... Was there a specific um, this, uh, one that, that you, the one that you said was empty? Which location? This was, was uh, on Quietwood. Uh, walk path and I think actually the one at the maintenance shed too. It's just the last thing the guys do before they leave on Friday if, if they should make sure that those bags are filled. Yeah. Because that's really the active time of all the dog walkers. That is part of the Friday routine. I just I'm not sure what time that happens and if they if they ran out. So I'll, I'll check with them a little bit. But that is typically part of the uh, the Friday, you know, activities is to get all those refilled before the weekend. Okay. okay. All right, um, I four to Edith Banks Park and Recreation Commission meeting June 26th. And now we're on item J, new and other business. Um, July meeting? Okay, so I will bring up um, that the July meeting looks like we will need to be rescheduling it due to board member unavailability for the currently scheduled date of July 10th. So my understanding, Eric, you're going to... We'll see if we... I'll, I'll work on querying when people are available. Okay. So we will try to get a quorum together for July, and if not, then um, clearly we will not have a meeting if we do not have a quorum. Uh, any other new and other business? Okay. Anything from the public? Which number you want? J1. Uh, yes. Um, what I would like to say is until the board has a meeting, has a vote, makes a policy to not put my request on this particular uh, item number, request for future meeting agenda items, I am going to ask again that there be a policy made 
for response in communications from the district manager via email. So thank you for the item. I think the board has, as a board, made it clear that we are not interested in pursuing this as a um, agenda item for a future meeting. I didn't hear a thing you said. So the board has made it quite clear a number of times that this is not something that the board is interested in um, putting on the board. We don't have to. You are suggesting something and the, the board can make a formal board member uh, may make a formal request to put it on the agenda but the ultimate ag agenda is being formulated between the district oh, manager I'm and, not talking about that. and the um, president of the board so given the fact that you have restated the request probably for half a year now and there has been no interest uh, in this topic on the side of the district manager or the board president, I think gives you a very clear response that the board will not be pursuing this. I totally understand that. What I'm saying is Naylor's censorship. He said, so, so he was the board has dealt it and it's not supposed to be in the minutes. So then the, the board already did in exactly the same and manner. He the was board speaking for himself, not for everybody. Not so again, me. you're going back to something earlier in the agenda, so he I don't want to censor. Get the minutes. So and this is something that Stephen has been talking about for eons, okay. that the minutes don't reflect what actually has been said or done in the meetings. So thank you. Are there any other public comments? Yeah. Thank uh, you. For, thank you. First of all, the minutes are better. Okay, Carolyn, I, I just want to, I want to point that out. It looks like, like you did a little bit better job, so we're moving in the right direction. Second of all, I'm going to ask once again that uh, we that the board really look at uh, their responsibility for civic engagement and the shutting down of conversations or saying, I don't, we, we don't want to have a policy to speak with the public. The fact that you guys do not publish your emails uh, uh, on, online, I, I just think that, that this is a very, there's a very petty there's a lot of pettiness that's going on here, and uh, we just we can get beyond this. We we probably won't like each other, but we, but we can disagree. But we also can do things together and uh, so look at an opportunity to uh, foster positive dialogue and and do the right things. Because right, so after all, you're serving the public. One, do you have? A yeah, I, I, I yes, I, I, I. Maybe I should restate it. I think we need a meeting to discuss the proper role of civic engagement um, and communication with the public because it's falling far short of certainly anything I learned in civics class uh, for local democracy. Thank you. All right, item K, recognitions and board member items of interest. I feel like I should say something if nobody's going to say anything. I just want to say happy summer and like, you know, welcome to your first summer and just roll and good luck because starting on Monday it's going to get really crazy. You made the first year. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it's an early, early item. <laughs> May the forces be with you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, I'll leave it. Yeah. It's, it's got a good team, got a good crew. Yeah. So. Anything from the public? Uh, yeah, no, I, I'll just I'll second what you said. I think it's great. I, I, I know Luke's capable, and the team is, you know, everybody is ready for, ready and ready to go, and I know it's going to be another great summer with a special stamp of Luke Fretwell on it, so I'm excited. Thanks, Stephen. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, item L, adjourned. I have a motion. Uh, call the yes. Yes, I, I make a motion. <laughs> Second. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Thank you, everyone.